YouTube. This is Justin Valencia alongside with Delaware Mike. We have a very special guest today, the ultra, ultra violent underground participant, the carnivore Remington Roar. Thank you. Oh, there he is. Thank you for oh, being here. How are you doing today? How's everything going? I'm good, man. It's a pretty chill day. Got it. You know, the shoot was short. I got a nap in. Got some good grub. I'm happy. Good, good, good. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get started. First things first, um, you grew up in Kansas City, Kansas, correct? Yeah, Wichita, Kansas, about three hours south of Kansas, Kansas City. Wichita, awesome. What was your first introduction into pro wrestling? Uh, first introduction was like my cousins. They were really into like the Attitude Era of WWF. And I was around like seven or eight when they were watching it and ended up playing the video games a lot. And I got super attached to characters like Mankind and The Undertaker and Kind of, you know, slowly became a fan from there and eventually started, you know, watching all the, the weekly shows. I was around like 11, so I would catch Raw on Mondays uh, at the time. Tuesday was was when they were doing the WWE, ECW. Thursdays was TNA and Fridays was SmackDown. So. Awesome, awesome. That was a, for PlayStation, your first uh, when you got introduced to it? Uh, 64. Like, No Mercy was probably my first, like, wrestling game. Oh, wow. Well. That was probably, the, in my opinion, the best wrestling game of all time, No Mercy. That one's really good. I still think, like, the first SmackDown versus Raw is, like, oh, yeah. the best. Like, the whole line of the roster is super good. The backstage brawls are dope. I'm also just a giant right on mark. So every time you get to gore somebody off the Titan Ton truck, like, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. Yeah, those, those games are good. Those games are, were, were classics. Back yeah. So, so what made you, what was the point in your life when you were like, I have to be a wrestler? Well, like I, I had the dream, you know, I was around like 11 or 12 and my, my childhood best friend and I started the backyard fed, you know, as, as a lot of mis Midwestern kids do. And, uh, you know, we had all of our characters and like that was the big dream was, you know, eventually getting into real rings and going around the country around the world doing that stuff. And um, I'm also a musician, so I was really also into my, my music and my bands at the time. So that kind of took a little bit of a a priority over wrestling because I kind of was like, I was like, I'm in the middle of Kansas. What are the chances I'm going to get picked up for any big promotion or, you know, be able to get out of nowhere because Kansas is the middle. And I was around 20, 20, 22, 21. When my childhood friend who actually did go the distance and like get trained and started wrestling and chose like, Hey man, like you still want to get in a real ring. And I was like, you serious? He's like, yeah. I was like, bet. <laughs> and so went to training and took my first bump. And ever since then, you know, it's we're here where we are now. <laughs> so, oh. oh, so that was your first day in a, in a, in a pro ring. What was, how was your first day in a training? Um, I'm definitely not going to say easy. Like, I played sports my whole life. So, like, the cardio conditioning wasn't um, too much of an issue. Uh, we also trained in a, like a non-ventilated, like kind of dungeony, uh, like warehouse gym scenario, and okay. so it had like no AC, and during like during the winter, like no heat. So um, getting used to that, and then going in the regular rings was wasn't too bad. Um, also, did competitive powerlifting, so like body pain for me wasn't too much of an issue. <laughs> so I mean. You know, he tried to run me through the ringers, made me sure that I wanted the I wanted the wrestle, and thankfully I passed. So, right, right. Well, I was going to ask him. So, when you when you uh, we always like to ask these questions, different ones we do. Like, did they teach you a lot about the uh, the etiquette and the? I'm always amazed by the the, the uh, you know the backstage etiquette. Like, know your role, don't do this, that, or what you Some people may pound it, others like. They don't, you know. No, that that was actually a pretty huge thing because, like, okay. we're my, my trainer's pretty old school, so he okay. definitely put in he put in the you know, you know, shake everybody's hands, like be a helping hand when you're not doing anything, like tear up, like tear down the ring, put up the ring, like if you can help um, any of the backstage people out because, like, you need to treat them just like you would a regular wrestler. You know, everybody who sets up the show is just as important as the people, the talent in the show. So that was that was really drilled in and something that that's nice because like i've seen other promoters 
that know my my trainer will reach out and be like, hey, I know he's one of your boys. Like, oh. thank you for training him up the right way. Like, you know, being respectful or whatever. Okay, so it's important what school you come from. Because, you, you, yeah, it's like anything. Oh, he's from there. We, uh, we don't want this guy. Yeah. yeah, like that kind of goes from promoter to promoter. I know some people who, like, won't even look at resumes if they see a certain trainer name or school name. But – I know some people, like, they don't really care too much about the trainer as long as you have good, consistent matches and, you know, you're you're being a good worker. It kind of just depends where, who you're talking to. Now, I saw the other interview, and and your guy, when you wanted, when you walked into that school, you wanted to do hardcore deathmatch stuff, right? You didn't want, but you didn't tell your trainer that you you just, like, you, had to, you knew you had to get trained. You were kind of like... Yeah, like, that's, I mean, that's, that's the one I definitely wanted to do, like, you know, watching... You know, ECW when I was young, and then uh, kind of like watching my first live death matches. Funny enough, I was thinking about it the other day. It was on TNA because they had like the six side no rope barbed wire attack door matches and stuff like that with Abyss. And I was like, oh yeah, I was like, I was super into that, and I wanted to go towards that way. And then, but obviously, like to be a good wrestler, you have to know how to wrestle, and that includes death match wrestling. So I was like, I, I was kind of hiding that little part of the dream until I had a lot more reps under my belt to be like, hey, yeah. this is where I want to go. I know if you trained me, like, do you do you approve? Is that cool? Like, and he's like, fuck yeah. Like, that's some of my best friends are deathmatch guys. So Right, right, right. You know, I'm thinking with all these deathmatch guys, they almost should have that in, as part of the training. Like, like if you want, like, uh, an extra, you want this session, like, you want, like, some people are never going to do that match. Uh, you know, we've had, but then if you want to do it, have a guy like you, you know, somebody dream on, somebody who's done it for a long time, and be like, now listen here, don't do like that, maybe do like that, or, or, or like, you know, be careful with that, and, you know what I mean? That's right. Your, your knowledge, your knowledge you're probably doing things differently now than when you did when you first started that match, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I remember when I did my first one, and a lot of people were shocked it was my first one just because of how, you know, fluid everything was. I mean, the, my first one was Pondo. So, right. And even Pondo was like, you know, afterwards he gave me the big, you know, uh, some big shine and gave me, like, you know, credit and stuff like that after the match. But I watched so much of it. Like, I, I can't even talk about it. How many hours? Because that's the thing too is a lot of people I think that want to do it don't sit there and like pick apart the matches like like you would for moves or whatever. Like they're like, oh shit, this is this is all really explosive and really cool to look at, but they're not looking at it like in movement wise, you know. Like I right. was at people, yeah, because like I was looking at people through tubes and like and hit tubes and like put people through doors or tables or like you know. And other gimmicks like a like a scissor board. Or like how is how do you guys do this without actually like murdering each other? You know, like yeah, yeah. Like obviously shit's gonna hurt, but I gotta know how to protect my person as much as I can without too many hospital visits. <laughs> right. right, because you know deathmatch moves. Um, look, they, they, they're gonna hurt a little bit, but but there's a it's a like one to ten. You do it really like the ball that like we interviewed. Uh, Sarah Vox the other day. Mm. She cut her. She had a real bad cut. It was from the tube hitting up, going up in the air, and landing on her. Oh yeah. So one so of my worst injuries is for me just doing a kick out and the referee not being a deathmatch ref and not scooping the ring. Yeah, kicked yeah. out, rolled over, eight inch puncture room right in my back. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah, that from Die Hard. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't know it till later, but. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, so, uh, it's little shit sometimes. It was fucked yeah, up. So death matches, you really got to know what you're doing. Yeah, no yeah, matter. absolutely, absolutely. If you get back, if we could back up a little, you were talking about uh, hardcore matches or death matches in uh, Impact Wrestling. I think they're the ones that really started, you know, putting it out on mainstream. I remember one of my first times seeing something that crazy was in the Abyss, the Abyss Sabu match at uh, I think it was Turning. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was wild. Vicious. That was vicious. For sure. Did you see that one? Like way back? Yeah, way yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Abyss. Yeah. DNA impact. Yeah, they yeah, tried. We had another uh Noro barbed wire with uh Judas Macias, okay, like Mills Mertes. That was super good. Okay. And a lot like yeah, yeah, that was good. And then it was kind of like the like the Brothers of Destruction style era to have like the Sinister Minister 
ended up being the dad of both Abyss and Mills Marquez or Jesus Macias. And so like they were fighting to be like superior brother pretty much kind of thing. Yeah, they really had some good angles back then. They really they really tried, you know, they, they brought a new product to the table. Yeah, yeah, man. Like that, well, that was my first ever like indie show was seeing TNA when they were touring back in like 2007. And I, I think back on that card, I'm like, bro, there were so many insane names and matches. Because there's like, I has, I saw like uh, LAX versus the, like the original LAX versus the Dudleys, like Rhino, Christian Cage, Kurt Angle. Like the main event, I usually just rattle off is freaking Samoa Joe and AJ Styles in the tables match. Shit, wild. Like, <laughs> And that was it like a house show or was it like one of the tapings? No, this is a house show. Oh, snap. Yeah, dude. I, like, I really like their house. You, you know, they were so cool. Not that many people went to them, well, at least in the Pennsylvania area. And then you got to meet everyone. You got to interact with them. And, you know, I mean, it was just like a one-on-one interaction with everyone. Yeah, that's that's how it was too, man. Like, I remember, like, that's the first time I met Abyss and I was, I was maybe like, I don't know, 14. I remember shaking his hands. Like, I'm going to be like you someday, man. Freaking get out there and be a monster and, you know, do that stuff. He's like, that's really cool, man. So like, keep chasing your dream. And while I'm looking up at his fucking six foot eight, 320 pound self. <laughs> like, huge human. Wow. Um, I, you, you mentioned your first death match was against Bad Man Pondo. Um, yeah. So a few times later, he put you over. He said, you know, you and, you and Hookford were one of the up and coming guys. They are. Um, how did that feel? surreal 100 percent. yeah man i remember it, it was kind of a funny story with with pondo because like originally my first death match was going to be um the duke it was gonna be john wayne murdoch oh. and uh john ended up accidentally getting double booked and so john couldn't make it out um and they're like hey man we're gonna find somebody to replace it john was like hopefully you know, he finds somebody good. Next thing I know is I see the freaking flyer with me and Pondo, and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like, I was like, that's Pondo. That's that's the legend. That's the dude, you know? Like, wow. that's Yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a good um good first death match to have, you know. Good first yeah. match, first time. And any uh spots that come to mind when you think of that first death match you had? What was that? Any any spots, I mean, any memorable spots. Oh yeah, man. So I I brought out a like I too specifically, I, I brought a signature weapon to the match that I call the food chain, and so I, I so volleyball I covered about eight hundred thumbtacks, no. and I have and I have it uh, on the end of a chain, so it looks kind of like a big flail. I bashed straight in the Pondo's head, had about maybe 50, 60, 70 tacks just layered on his head. Oh, jeez! And then uh, the finish, well, the, I guess the the full finish, which was. He pounded, was trying to pound two Kinsons into my head, got one launched in there, uh, shot me off, did the, the stop sign spot, bashing that Kinson way into my head, Ooh. and then did the center block to the crotch like he does for the win. So. Oh, wow. Now, we hear a lot about the Kinsons. And, I mean, you got the gusset plate and the Kinsons, but everybody says the Kinsons are worse. Yeah. Because it's so, it's because it's um, getting getting it in isn't really like the part that sucks. It's just freaking out about getting it out is kind of more of the problem. Like, thankfully, my I don't really use like the huge ones. Like you, you probably saw when like Jeff Cannibal had that big ass one. Oh yeah, big square one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I use the. They're a little smaller. They're about like an inch wide because yeah. I can grab those myself and pull them out versus like having to get pliers and having somebody like set me down. To get it out, so I pulled the one out of my head by myself out, and it, it was funny because in the back, like you, it, it looked like a, like a freaking body horror flick because I pulled it out and my skin stretched with it, so it was like three inches of skin, and then it finally like popped and like had an audible pop sound and then just crimson. Like, <laughs> well, I was there when they were pulling it out of Kobayashi at Tod years ago. Oh yeah, I don't know if you've seen the video, and the doctor guy mm -hmm. was pulling it. And, 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 and he was just sitting there, and they were, like, like holding it. I mean, and just pulling it. And like you said, it was stretching his head. Oh, yeah, dude. Stretch a head? There's, there's not much to give there. Yeah, cause it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, people are like, oh, how's that going in your skull? I'm like, it is in your skull. It's, it's like, all the way freaking aerated into your skull. So, like, 
it's you know it's kind of scary to think about, but thankfully my fucking Cro Magnum head makes it a little easier to take. Yeah, because that's a lot of little pokes in one little space. In one little space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really good. To have a, that's good to have a fat head. Yeah, like a lot of meat, like a like a Abdul the Butcher bushy head. Oh yeah, the more plus like guys like Tremont who have like the horn man. If you put it into that, it's, it's all scar tissue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put it in the horn. Go to the horn. Yeah, it'll be. A- is there anything you do to prepare yourself for a match like that? Like you know, you're taking a Kenzin or a Gusset plate. Is there any, like, any, any- um, I mean, I, I just have to. It's like it's kind of like channeling the character. I have to not think about right. me and reality and me and me as Roar. You know, like Roar's not Roar's not gonna care. <laughs> like he's gonna be like, wow, this pain hurts, but the pain's driving me towards yeah. win. So. It's just it's just kind of making that switch happen, or I guess in my case, making the volume knob up. I mean, it's it's cliche and corny sounding, but it's it's always accurate. Yeah, these these guys are a different breed. They're oh, not they're not like us. They're, they're, not, they're, they're a different type of guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I respect what you guys do. Uh, uh, art form, definite art form. When you got people watching and you're doing a story, it's an art form. I don't care what anybody says, and I, I'll right. you know, even if the you know, I don't even boo, say you fucked up into anybody, even even like on little shows that aren't, you know, you know hey, the guy's trying. I can't get in there and do it. You're trying to do something you right. like. And everybody starts out you know, green, you know, but you got to give a guy a chance. You don't, you know, you don't go to ice skating and do double. You know, Without so, fall. Yeah, those double sow cows and shit. Right. Like you do, one, you do one and they're like, hey, you did a good job. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, and not everybody's perfect. Even like some of the greats, man, fuck up. Like I shit, I watched Royal Rumble and fucking uh, that main event. Kevin Owens botched a fucking like pop up second rope moonsault. I'm like, KO could do this with his eyes closed, half asleep, bleeding out if he wanted to, but shit just happens sometimes. Oh, oh. Yeah, you guys can get respect from us. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hey. Hey, I was gonna tell him about you. Gusset plate. I saw you. You've taken gusset plates too. A lot of gusset. <laughs> <laughs> I take a lot of gussets, gusset two by fours, fucking tons of gussets. Those th- now see, as fans, when I see that gusset come out, I'm like, all right, it can, it can, it can get put on and fall off right away. It can get on and like hang, or it can get on there and be like, it's in. There. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, they could be on there for a hot minute, man. It's, it's funny because it even depends on like, oh, it's like, oh, it'll stick to your head really good because the, the skin's thin. I'm like, that will stick anywhere if you put it in hard enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I counted 100. It's like 12 by 12 with a little hole in the middle. It's like 130 or 40 spikes. Oh, those are just the little ones, too. You ever seen the fucking like textbook size ones? Like the railroad, the railroad gussets? Oh, no. They, you, those you, are huge, dude. Like, like no, Raven no, no. comes out with those a lot of the time. It looks like he's holding the Bible with the fucking massive gusset. Like I didn't even know those existed. See, just, huge, yeah. just when you think they can't get any crazier, something like that something comes out. Awesome. <laughs> Dude, there's I have, we gotta get inventive, man. That's why I come out with machetes. Like, you know, no 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 else nobody else is coming out come out and hit somebody with the camel clutch with a fucking machete. Or, you know, the kill like oh, the cross yeah. the machete, you know? Like <laughs> Is there any weapon? Well, first, what's your favorite weapon to use in a match? Um, that's hard. I mean, when it comes to kind of like your normal matches, like I do, I like I like tubes, I like pains, um, just because you can get really creative with those a lot. Yeah. Um, I also really like weed whackers. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of the only people who really like says that out loud. But I don't know, man. Just the the pop from the crowd when the, like you hear that first rev up with the weed whacker. Is, is it makes me happy. <laughs> Definitely shot value for you know when the, when the weed whacker comes out. Um, oh, 100 percent. What the fuck's that gonna do? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's life awesome. shit. <laughs> is there any weapon you would not take? Yeah, uh, I don't do toothpicks. Oh, oh yeah, they're silly. Yeah. yeah, no toothpicks. No, like I'll do the head skewers, but I won't do like skewer boards. Okay. Um, Fire? I'll do fire. I've done fire. Yeah. Uh, that's really about it. Like, anything that can, like, or pencil boards, obviously, I won't do. Um, yeah, we were there for that. 
probably uh, unless I could really figure out a way to make it not suck a ton of ass, probably wouldn't do razor wire. Also, yeah, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Well, I, sometimes it looks bad, but you could probably do it and not. You, you know, I, mean? I, I don't know. <laughs> There's always there's always a way to make it not suck a ton. Like I mean, I've taken like razor boards and knife boards, and they fuck you up. But like, I was fine. Thankfully, I have a fucking like meaty back, so that helps. Like, <laughs> we've seen a lot of people. I've I've been there when Gage got caught on fire in in Delaware, and that yeah. is, I, and I've seen other guys get on fire, Lobo, different guys, and and they get them out, but it's rough. Uh, I don't know, dude. It's scary, especially when it's your friends and shit. Like I, uh, what was it? I was at Slave of the Death match in Colorado last year, or this, this past one, and one of the matches was fucking Satu Jin versus Aiden Blackheart, and it was a Flaming Doors match. And dude, but like Aiden's a good friend of mine, and he was on fire for way too fucking long. And I was like, dude, your ass is on fire for like forty five seconds. And I was like, that's too fucking long. <laughs> wow, that's way too long. Yeah, one second yeah. is too. Yeah, yeah, one second uh, is too long. Yeah, absolutely. So did you did you all uh, grow up watching tour, uh, combat zone wrestling? Yeah, man, that was that was my first like step into real like full on death matches, not like TNA or ECW. Like I mean, like Taipei and stuff like that was definitely like a real death match. But CZW was what got it going. You know, my first like I didn't get to watch the first full match, but I watched the clip. It was Mondo and Wife Beater in that um, two hundred light tube fucking death match where he takes like Mondo takes that weed whacker. Like those brutal weed whacker shots. Yeah, but like that's probably probably the first clip I saw was that. I was like, "This is fucking cool. I need to see more." <laughs> wow, wow, wow! I was at that match actually. Oh yeah, that's yeah. cool. Believe it or not, where we live, it's Smyrna, Delaware, and I grew up in Dover. That's where they had the first couple of TODs, and they moved it to Smyrna, then to EJ's Farm. It's all mm. with a like uh. 20 mile yeah, radius yeah. of us, right? We're, we're, right where we're at. And you're right, right in the freaking epicenter. That's what's up. Like, sexy Eddie, sexy Eddie squirting incident. That was like right there down the, uh, like a, a mile from where I live. He still talks about that shit. <laughs> he, still, he, still, he still talks about that fucking, like, that gusher he had, you know, hitting that artery. Well, I'm going to tell him about the hospital thing. I was at that show and they took him to the hospital. <clears throat> No, I didn't take him. JD and JD some other. Took him. JD. But um, he was bleeding bad, and he wanted to keep going on, just like you guys. You just want to keep going on, and um, yeah. it must be hard to to leave that venue when it's surrounded by like a thousand people, and you just went nuts, and they say you got to leave. What? I mean, I, I can only imagine what that would feel like. You can imagine. So it's, yeah, I've had to do that once, and it sucks. Like, right, right. It sucks. It sucks. Yeah. And this, Thing so, um, they come down again. So then, um, Necro at the end of the match, Necro and White Beater went off that truck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a crazy clip where Necro's trying to get up the truck and he can't get up it. The front of the hood, it had a big hood on it. Mm-hmm. But you go to watch the thing, I grabbed his belt buckle and pushed him up it. <laughs> what a fucking homie, that's what's up, like. Huh? But, so what a fucking homie, that's what's up. Like a couple of boys. Yeah. So they went off it and he got cut in the back and he had to go to the he didn't like going to the hospital, but they looked at it and said, You gotta go to the hospital. So um I drove him to the hospital. I'd known him from way back. So we, I drove him to the hospital and Eddie was in the hospital. It was like, you know, before COVID had these little cubicles and they were just separated by little curtains, right? And yeah. Eddie Eddie was in a curtain right there, and we're like and they're like, what happened to him? And like, wrestling. Oh, another one coming in. Like, you know, that usual. And um, they've given Eddie, he went in there in his gear, his bikini gear, right? Yeah. And they're like, he said, I told them that I was a stripper and I was doing a bachelorette party and I fell through, I was dancing on a glass table and fell through it <laughs> and got cut. That's a that's a good fucking, that, yeah, that's a solid, that's a solid tale. <laughs> So now he's there, and you, you ever seen Eddie's gimmick thing he's got on? Yeah, yeah, he just wears the trunks. The nurses loved it, because it was, it was 20 years ago. They were like, you know, like, there's a stripper guy. Who? And they're like, they were, by the time they were leaving, they gave him a doctor's outfit, a uh, like a full orderly schmock. <laughs> no, really. And, um, oh, and a full orderly schmock, and um, 
uh, they're hugging him. Bye, Eddie. You be careful. He's like, he's he had charmed all the nurses. Because <laughs> you got this well built guy laid back with it with his uh in his, his strip, and then they know he's a stripper, so they're like, mm. Oh, stripper. Uh, I mean, can you imagine like if it's like a girl strip yeah, there's, a, there's a female stripper back here? Like, really? Like, the doctor might want to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> they left. Uh, the guy Manny, the promoter that brought him down, he said, Man, I'm glad I got that uh international health insurance uh, for this guy. <laughs> and then um and then they took they took care of Necro, but he I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. And then later then, later when I met him again, that's the story that he I said, What'd you tell them? He goes, I was stripping at a bachelor party and I fell off the table and got cut up. I had a similar thing happen to me uh, when I was in Carnage Cup. Because like I had to go, I had to go to the hospital after uh, the finals of Carnage Cup because I had like let's see if I can show it yeah this fucking big dude cut down to my muscle in my forearm so I was like a couple centimeters away from not using my forearm oh. I took a big old, I took a big old fucking roof bump uh, but I went to the hospital and I was like sitting there and I cut an artery in my elbow also my arm was fucking shredded so I was bleeding out in this fucking uh, like bucket and like my whole body's like glistening with like glass and completely had the toe red and I'm sitting there talking to the chick who's like trying to sew me up and like I keep noticing there's like more and more like female nurses keep coming in like first it's one and it's three and there's like five other ones in there two of them are actually doing stuff like three of them are just like sitting around kind of talking to me like looking at me <laughs> and, like, and one of the chicks stops. It's like she's talking to me. Let's you know about what happened. She's like, she's like, did I ever tell you like Jason Momoa? I was like, ah, uh, he's into this. Like, <laughs> I was like, I, do, I don't. I was like, I was like, I look like his pale chubby cousin. But sure, it was like every dude with long hair and a beard looks like Jason Momoa, a fucking Aquaman. And I was like, <laughs> oh no, like all these fucking chicks are in here to look at like this, you know, the muscular, long-haired Viking-looking motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I was like, take it out. Like, it's not like I'm bleeding out in this fucking hospital or anything, folks. Like, it's fine. <laughs> well, that's what happened to Eddie. But it was a little, it was tamer, you know. And then, yeah, uh, that was, that was fun. Well, what did you tell him happened to you? Oh, I told him I was like, I'm a professional wrestler. Because apparently they had somebody earlier in the week, because I forgot on day one, some dude fucking, he kind of half-assed going over the top rope and fucking snapped his, uh, his shin. Oh. And so they remembered him from earlier in the week and I was like are you one of those wrestler guys so they called me like right fucking at the beginning I was like yeah I was like I'm, I'm wrestling and this happened so yeah yeah well sometimes you gotta tell them where they'll call the police they'll think it was an attack no really they will because they're like oh guys. no I had fucking probably 20 doctors when I was in the ER in Vegas for that puncture wound like me reiterate the story and after like the third one I was like oh y'all think I killed somebody I was like, nah, like, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm on zero drugs. I haven't even drank today. Like, <laughs> I am just have a fucking eight inch puncture wound in my back from a very like brutal sport that I do. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Sew me up. Let me drive home. Well, maybe you could show your your phone. See, see, this is me. This is what I do. I did it all over the place. That's what I did at fucking Carnage Cup, and they're like, oh, like I showed them the bump that did the what it you know fucking shredded my arm. And they're like, holy shit. I'm like, yeah, that was dumb. But it was cool, though. Like, <laughs> we're, we're talking, you know, we're, it is crazy. And whatever happened, happened. But you're on the map, and we're talking about it. We're, we, like, you did something that we're talking about. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's in art. It's in my mind. I just can't believe that a, a, a safety OSHA type of guy like Kevin Brennan would allow something like that. Oh, 100%. What a safe, safe human. <laughs> I can't believe he would have yeah. I mean, he must have. He must have told you guys. Oh, no, I don't think so, huh? No, you didn't. no, man. Just, just to put it this way, like when I looked down on that roof, I originally saw maybe like a log cabin, and uh, maybe like four or five bundles, like four bundles. When I got up on the shoulders of freaking Chew Martinez and looked down again, there was about hundred plus tubes on those door on those tables. And I was like, cool, we're going. <laughs> He likes to get in the, he, he'll help out with the, with weapons for sure. Oh, yeah, that's what he was doing. There, there, I saw boxes in the side of the freaking ring, and you see it's like him and like two other like of his goons just fucking throwing in tubes, just no, getting I him know. off the fucking no. tables. I was like, this is already like a 30 foot drop. Let's just, let's just make it worse. It's fine. Like, <laughs> it, you know, it's a, 
I think it's a rite of passage carnage cup, no matter what anybody. I like, I've been on many carnage cups. I've been in many of them. But it's almost like you, you didn't do carnage cup. Uh, well, you got to do carnage. It's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's like getting beat in in a gang almost. Like, you know? Right. That's kind of the reason why like, I did it in the first place is like, I was a big fan of watching carnage cup. Like, I liked, I liked watching all of it. Like, it had really crazy steps. Yeah. Um, like obviously, it. like, Especially the year I was in, Britain was in a lot of hot water for like the Max the Impaler stuff and like him not doing a very good job of PR but keeping his mouth shut about certain things. I'm like, you could do so much, like, you could keep Deep South a thing, man, if you just like change your image a bunch <laughs> to just wrestling and not your politics and like kept it brutal and just shush, just shush. Well, like one of my favorite PR fucking like mentions from you know Hoodfoot Mo Atlas. Like sometimes the best thing to do is just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. And like that that'll get you, that'll get you so many places, man. If you just like keep quiet sometimes and let shit just be. Yeah. And I think like I think Carnage Cup could have kept being a big thing if like there wasn't so much other shit layered on top of it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like Carnage Cup. I've seen them all. Been a lot of them. Yeah, man. It puts people on a map, and it's like the rite of passage. You got to do Carnage Cup, and a t- I'd say Carnage Cup and a TOD. TOD. TOD is yeah. yeah. That was that's my top big two like tournaments like in the world is, t- is TOD and this is kind of a weird one, but TOH in Australia is another one for me. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Now I believe you're going to do tournament of death this past year, correct? Yeah, I was asked to, but I had a wedding that I was actually like part of on the day. So I was oh. like, I was like, if I was just going to this wedding, like, I would say no. But since I'm like part of the wedding like party, I, I, and I've, I've said yes to this like a year in advance. I gotta go. Like, sorry. <laughs> See, if you would have been my best man and my best friend, I would have told you to go to Carnage Cup. I, I, no, no, I, no, I'll be, I'll be turning to death because I know what that would have meant to him. And and I'm like, you know what I mean? I would have been like, you're going. No, well, no, yeah. I don't. Like, you are going. You, you're it's okay. Wedding. You're not coming in. Now, security will not let you in the wedding. Go to. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I, 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 my time will come for it for sure. I feel. I feel it. It ain't going nowhere. Carnage. I mean, uh, DOD is going to get. Yeah. But I know. It, yeah. I know. It, you had to go. You had to go to the wedding. There's nothing you can do. I know. I know. Huh. No, man. That's that's one of the big two. Like, that one want a tournament of hate, man. That's that's the boys. So. Growing up, what was your favorite tournament of death? <clears throat> Probably 13. I like 13 a lot. Like, the whole roster and the lineup for it was just, like, every single match was fucking hitters. So, I also like 16, like, so. But I think 13 is probably the one. 13. That's the one with, with um, CZW versus BJW, correct? Yep. So, it's got Kasai and uh, Kobayashi. Yeah, everyone. And uh, Takeda, even though he got first rounded. Yeah, everyone was on that one. Yeah, that was a solid, solid. Mm-hmm. See, I like the first one because it was involved the IWA CZW angle. So, and, and, yeah. And, oh, the second one? That's the second one, yeah. With Nick Mondo and Rotten in the final. Oh, yeah, that is two. That is two, yeah. I'm all mixed up. Well, maybe that was my favorite. That, the, the, the first one because it's the first one. Yeah. Uh, and then the second one because of the angle. And then they, they all just, I mean, like, I like them all. I mean, they're, they're, they're all good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's not really a weak one of the bunch, man. Like, it's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They're all good. They're all good. Yeah, they're all good. Well, yeah, hopefully we'll see it one day. That'll be good, yeah. Yeah, and that, that's always kind of my been my thing for deathmatches. Like, like titles and stuff like that are, are great and obviously great accolades. But, like, I, I kind of wanted to go to the same vein of, like, Matt Tremont, where it's like, I want I want tournament wins. I want to be that deathmatch tournament guy because, like, in our – and our flavor of the sport, like that's fucking, that's the you know the, the big badges of honor. It's like you've gone three rounds, two rounds, or you know multiple rounds in whatever tournament, and you fucking showed up best. You're the yeah. dude, you know. I can see that. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, they're, they're they're more. The title is different. This is like an event that, yeah, it's like a Super Bowl. So yeah, I mean, and like it's it's even crazier now. Like I've been in. God, 12, I think. Uh-huh. I've won two, so I'm, I'm getting there. I got five more to go to tie a try with Tremont. So, 
Yeah, you know, well, we we talked, we did, uh, we interviewed, um, who did we interview? The one dude that was, uh, oh, Anthrax the other Anthrax. day. Anthrax, you know him from H2O? And oh, yeah, yeah. He, he wants to just, he's happy to get to the finals of one. I mean, that's his goal to get to, just to be in the final. That's, a, and I'm like, and I, I really started learning how important it is for you guys that you That's a huge to, deal. It is a huge deal. See, I'm not looking at it, I'm looking at it differently, but I'm like, really? He's, man, I just want to be in the finals of one, just to be in the finals. I'm like, oh, wow, all right. Right. And like, that was my goal when I first started. I was like, I want to get to the finals just to show a point, which I, in my first deathmatch tournament, I did end up being in the finals. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, you know, with Dale Patrick's Akira and Mickey Knuckles. So I wasn't, I was there with the Sharks, man. So, so, so we talked about uh, Combat Zone Wrestling's tournament of death. Now, I have to ask everyone's talking about it. The whole deathmatch community is talking about it. Ultra Violent Underground. Oh, no. You're a participant. <laughs> What can we expect? What can we see from you? And, uh, you know, what do you know about it? Uh, definitely bring in my Midwest carnivorous brand of ultraviolence to, to Jersey. You know, biting people, throwing people, suplexing people through anything and anybody. So that's all to bring into the underground. And what I know about it, man, like I, I'm going in a little blind but I'm going in with fists head high, you know, to show exactly to the underground what I'm going to bring and where I'm going to set myself out on the totem pole. So and I'm a, just to rub, just to make a point, I'm shooting for the top of the pole. So that's great. What do you think about Sandy being affiliated with the company? Uh, that's a pretty, that's like, that's also kind of a surreal thing, kind of like with Pondo or Necro, like, Zandig, Zandig and Nate Hatred were like my CZW dudes. Like, wow. you know, if you can't tell by like, if you ever watch my shit, you can kind of see it like that influence on me. And even just look at it's like, you know, yeah. trying to be muscular, got longer hair, like, you know, shit, shit ends up tracking. <laughs> so like, I, I'm, I'm pumped as fuck about Zandig being a part of it. So, do you get like so so you? When you see, when you meet guy like Nick, see, we've known these guys for years being in the area. So it's like, yeah, Necro. But um, when you see a guy like a legend, like a Necro or like uh, Zandig and people like that, Pondo, and you see him for the first time, are you cut? Kind of, do you get a different feeling from if you, you know, the other things you do? Like, do you get. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, I, I'll even use the term starstruck. Like, I won't even be like. Oh, yeah, I, must say it. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, hell, it is, though, man. Because, like, I, you know, like. Meeting Pondo, big fucking deal. Like meeting Necro, especially because the same times I've met both of them, I ended up fighting with like fighting them in the same day, which is wild. Like, right. you know, like when I met Tremont, like I, I worked Bloodstorm Pro in Jersey and it was at the H2O like center. So I met Tremont. I was like, man, like he knew me before I, I met him. And like, that's like to my brain and restriction, like my child brain, I'm like that's fucking wild. And Matt Tremont knows my name before I've met him. Like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like even with Zandig, like when Zandig was making those those posts about me, like you know, like oh, who's this Remington guy? I'm like, that's fucking like half of me is like, that's fucking wild. I was like, that dude knows my name. Like that's crazy as shit. Like, <laughs> you know, so it's it's cool. Like thinking about, especially now, like you know, people like consider my friends even too. It's like, oh yeah, like I'm like you know, I've talked to these dudes and hung out with them and had fucking beers and lunch and fucking mm. shooting the shit with people like I used to watch when I was younger. You know, it's wild. Especially that match with Necro. You and you and him went at it. You know. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> that was you, made, you made me fucking earn that shit. If I was going to beat him, he's gonna be like, you got to fucking make sure you can beat me, kid. And just fucking threw those giant granite fucking lunchbox fists in my fucking grill. Yeah. What, what, what do you, what do you, would you go? Would you go to a Chinese restaurant and order French fries? No. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, would you? No, like maybe at a buffet if I'm just really fucking craving <laughs> potato, but like I ain't gonna order them. <laughs> Wait, you know, if you you know what we're talking about there? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did you think of that when you seen it? <laughs> It's your brother metal guy there coming in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Slack. That the whole Slack Zandy gang. It was wild. That's one of my favorite matches when I fought Slack, though. I felt like fighting myself a bit. 
I don't see the resemblance or the. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the um, ICW No Hold Barred match we had with Schlack. Um, yeah, we were fighting in Chicago. Funny, funny, even one of the funnier things about that is I had laryngitis that weekend. Oh, so my voice was like super fucking graveled. And so the whole time I was talking to Schlack, like before or like after the match or fucking like people were hearing me and him talk and he has that fucking super gravelly ass voice. And so I sounded just like he does because I fucking my voice is all fucked up. So everybody's sitting there like it sounds like there's fucking two of them. This is weird shit. It's like <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that's funny. That's great. So, so you wrestled for the clowns back in uh 21, 2021. Uh, how did your yeah. experience? Yeah, I wrestled. Uh, that was my first and only steel cage match. Was at JCW. That's right. How was your experience working for him? Oh, it was awesome, man. Like they're they're fucking super super nice dudes. Like like I thought it was crazy that the green room was in their uh, the old Lotus Pod. So like where they you know recorded a lot of their best albums and shit like that, just chilling in the back, you know, waiting to go bleed for a bunch of sick juggalos in, in Michigan. Man, it was rad. <laughs> How were the fans of that show? Uh, really into it. Like I was, I was kind of nervous because, like, I'm not like uh, your kind of regular like juggle wrestler. Like, I don't, I don't really rep the Hatchet Man. Like, I like ICP. Don't get me wrong. I, I chug a lot of Fago, but uh, uh, like, I, I didn't think they were gonna dig me enough. But thankfully, me just bringing the brutality made them like me. They're like, he's violent as fuck. We like him. Like, so they they were really receptive. Good, good, good. Now they're known to be like a little rough sometimes. The, jug the Juggalo fans, they throw stuff. Yeah, out. yeah. I was waiting for some people to maybe start throwing shit, especially because like I was wrestling uh, Peter B, Peter B, beautiful, and I was waiting for some shit to possibly get thrown at him. So I was like, <laughs> I'll duck and see a bottle. <laughs> That's great. Now deathmatch fans are unique sometimes. What's the what's the weirdest thing they had you sign? Any deathmatch fan ever come up to you and have you have you sign something crazy? We always ask the guys. Um, I've had, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of like a, a multiple answer question. Like I've signed tubes that I've bitten cause I eat glass. I eat the tubes and shit and matches like, they're like, Oh, you fucking chopped this, sign this. Uh, I had, I've had people come up at me with like full canvases, like, like art canvases. And they're like, Hey, put your face on this. And I'm like, okay. And I like swear my fucking bloody face on the mask. They're like, Oh, sign this. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm, this art, like, <laughs> I did that once and it almost looked like my face one time. I'm like, that's pretty rad. I might want to keep that. Um, they sell yeah. those. They sell those. They do sell those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and then there was the, probably one of the funniest ones, though, is I, I, I started a match and it was like, you remember those big, like, Culligan jugs, the big water jugs on sticks? Oh, yeah. So I had one of those and it was completely covered in gussets. And I freaking went and swinging this dude and he ducked and I hit the post and the like the I guess the reverberation from the post into that made it slip out of my hands and it freaking shot like bounced off the post and hit a dude in the crowd so like one of the gussets fucking got this dude's shirt and I was like oh fuck dude that dude's gonna be pissed and as I looked at him he's like this big fucking looks like an ex-con like just tatted up fucking big muscular motherfucker I'm like damn it I don't want to fight nobody tonight like besides in the ring is like a butt whatever like I, he caught me after the show, and he had the the jug still in his hand. I was like, "Shit, he's gonna be mad." He's like, "Bro, can you sign this?" And I was like, "You got cut by Augusta, just happenstance in the crowd, and you're into it." Fuck yeah! So <laughs> I signed the jug, and I signed his shirt. I like, got torn. He's like, "Hell yeah, man! Thanks for making a memorable night." I was like, "Sick." <laughs> it, it's such a subculture. It's a, it's yeah. such a, a like. I saw your other interview. You said your mom came to some shows, and. Or one show, and then she, you don't like to. Uh, I guess she doesn't like the death match stuff too much. Or it, yeah, <laughs> she doesn't like seeing her baby boy get all fucking cut up. You know, like right. right. But um, have you brought? Have you ever brought a friend uh, to it, or a, a girlfriend, or somebody that didn't know anything about it just to blow their mind and be like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I have, I have uh, two longtime friends. Like I call them my brothers. So I've known them forever. But like my my second oldest brother, I brought him to a show, and he he was one of those dudes. Like when he was younger, he he didn't really understand why people liked wrestling. He was like, yeah. uh, you know, it's, you know, it's scripted, blah blah. Why are you into this thing? So I brought him. Uh, he moved up to North Carolina, so I brought him to the show where I fought Raven Havoc in 
the um what was it called it was the uh as above so below death match so it's like both sides of the ring are open massive pains and barbed wire contraptions on the outside the other two sides are freaking no row barbed wires tons of glass bear boards and like he sat through that whole card saw me and, and, and raven fucking tear it up and he was like dude this is so much better than like regular tv wrestling I'm like, yeah. oh. so like he just got became a fan man like, and i showed him some other stuff i i know i thought he did like i showed him um like Lucha Underground and some more flashy shit. And he's like, now he's just a, a big wrestling fan, which is pretty rad. Deathmatch and Lucha got him. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's always interesting when the Deathmatch guys or even the regular wrestlers tell friends and family what they do and they're just blown away. I mean, if you blow us away, you know they're blowing them away. They don't, have, they, they, they don't know nothing about it. They, they have no clue about it. Right. It's That's one thing that's kind of funny is like I, I kind of forget – in reality, like when I just name stuff off, I'm like, oh, like I was at the gym and my I had my forehead was all fucking uh, pretty fresh from a fucking hacksaw I took to the forehead from Aiden Blackheart. And I ended up bleeding at the gym. I just like it just pressure my head built up and it started like bleeding a bit. And I was like, oh, shit. So I started like sopping my my blood up with my beanie. And uh <laughs> Everybody's like, are you okay, man? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's just blood. It's no big deal. He's like, that's blood from your face, though. It's like random passerby. I was like, yeah, it's no big deal. And I was like, oh, right. Like, I'm used to bleeding from my body profusely all the time. I forget that, like, nobody else is probably used to this. It's not normal to do that. <laughs> right. <clears throat> right. Right, right, right. See, I would I would see him and say, that's a, I, you're a deathmatch worker. If I never knew you. <laughs> that was the goal, man. Like. I feel like I'm also one of those dudes who never pulls the holes. Like I'm not a deathmatch wrestler. I'm a wrestler that does deathmatch. I was like, I'm kind of proud of the of the title, man. I, I like being a deathmatch wrestler. So I'm gonna say, yeah, like I definitely am a wrestler, and I can do regular matches, and I can work strong style and like all Japan style, like I do, like in my deathmatches. Right. But I prefer being a deathmatch specialist than being a deathmatch wrestler. So my next question, I mean, you pretty much answered it. When a promoter hits you up, it, it, would you prefer doing a death match or just a regular, regular match? Um, I mean, it's it like I, I sort of answered, but like it really does depend. Like it, if we're doing a story angle, or if we're doing a one-off thing. Like if we're doing a story angle, we can start it off doing regular matches or more traditional matches and build up stipulations until we get to a death match if we want to. Or even just get to like a, well, a hardcore match, or if you want to just bring me in for like a one-time thing, and you want me to show what I do best, or what people know me for, yeah, bring out, bring out the pains, bring out you know thumbtacks, bring out whatever you want. We can, we can go balls to the wall with it. So, like, like a specialty, a specialty, a special event on the show. Yeah, you know, it's your one or two death matches you have on the card versus, you know. 10 matches of straight tube throwing, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you were at IWA Mid-South. Uh, it's a mystery, too, against Otis Stovar. Yes, it did. How did how, how, you feel, um, you know, when you got contacted to work for IWA Mid-South? Um, at first, uh, that because that was my second time working for Mid-South. Oh, well. Um, at first, I wasn't going to go. Because I felt kind of insulted the first time I went, because I worked Prince of the Deathmatch uh, right. at the Lost King, and I like I thought the booking was weird. They put a lot of like brand new green kids, or like that was their first death match and pushed them through the tournament. And like I kind of like afterwards, I was like, if you put everybody's backs, like everybody back to back, like looking looking at their backs in the line, and you should say who should win this tournament. Like, I'm the most scarred up dude. Like, I, I put in a lot of work. And that's no knock on Carver, who did win, because Carver's a fucking super good worker. Like, he's a really good uh, character worker. And, he, like, he can fucking throw down in a death match. I, I fought him multiple times. He's fucking awesome. Like, he was the one who first rounded me, ended up fucking winning the whole tournament. I didn't realize kind of halfway, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's no crowd. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean no crowd? 
I was like, death matching for no crowd. I have to put my brain in a completely different mindset. Oh, to like, no crowd. Oh, I thought you meant it was like nobody, like three people showed up or something. No, no it was completely crowdless. Like, because it was just in their like training facility area and there was no crowd. So it was just like me, Otis, uh, the boys in the back and fucking the commentators. And that was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so people- Hard to do that. See, the, the original of Underground was like that. Ultraviolet Underground it was done in the back of the arena, and it's yeah, it's, yeah. But now, but yeah, because yeah, it's weird. You 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 feed. They say you feed off the fans, right? Right, and then you know, I, I've never been a wrestler, especially because the way I was trained to wrestle for myself. You know, I, I always want to feed off and fluctuate and, and improv with the crowd. So if it's like, you know, sitting there, I'm like. There's nothing to fucking read. Like I have to, I just got to keep doing what I'm doing and go through it, you know. So that's tough. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. different. Yeah, yeah it's, definitely, it's it's a weird mindscape for sure. Yeah. You also worked No Peace Underground. How was your experience with them? Fucking love No Peace. <laughs> no Peace is a blast, dude. I love No Ring Death Matches. It's definitely one of my favorite. Like I would say the stipulation variations on on the match. Because, like, I just love that barroom brawl feel. Like, you know, the the crowd. I think the crowd believes it even more than, like, we already do. I mean, we're already bleeding a ton already. But, like, with the ring, like, everybody's like, oh, like, people who don't know are like, oh, it's trampoline. It's soft, whatever. I was like, oh, man, that dude just got suplexed onto, you know, light tubes and broken glass on concrete. You can't. <laughs> can't fake that. Yeah, I can't fake concrete, buddy. Like, I've taken concrete bumps, like, and I, I freak out a lot of green kids back at home. I was like, yeah, make sure you bump as hard as possible, as flat as possible, so if you take a concrete bump for the match, you'll be good. <laughs> wow, yeah, too bad. Well, they had a big tournament this weekend in um, H2O. Uh, no Came ring. Came ring. Yeah, my, uh, my, my, my friend Stretch won that shit, and I was super proud of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have been good for that. Yeah, too yeah, bad. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, can't do, did you wrestle somewhere else this weekend, or? Uh, not this past weekend. I actually, thank kind of thankfully had a weekend off. I needed to get some shit done around. So I was like, I get the rest. Like I don't get to sleep much anyway because of my job, like my shoot and traveling and trying to squeeze in everything else throughout the week because I got gym and food and my other fucking hobbies and shit. So like, so now when I, I checked out your Instagram and um, man, this guy's strong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can live like six, seven hundred pounds. <laughs> well, I try to get strong. <laughs> no, I mean, you, uh, you're, you're you're a power lifter. I mean, I, I don't know how much you're doing now. I mean, but I saw in competition. I saw you in some competitions, like mm-hmm. six hundred and twenty pounds, five hundred pounds lifting. I mean, yeah, my my best deadlift is uh, six forty. My best squats six forty five. Uh, I never got my best bench in Ken Comp, but I bench about 435. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you, uh, when did you get into that? Have you been doing that your whole life, lifting like that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Like My mom uh, actually is the one who trained me. She was a bodybuilder. Uh, oh, really? She powered the first and then went to bodybuilding, but like I was around like 12 or 13. I was like, hey, mom, I want to go lift. And I'm like, I couldn't go to the gym and like be by myself first off because I was, you have to be like 16. Uh, wow. to be by yourself. I was like, hey, mom's like, you, you're cool with training me at the gym. She's like, hell yeah. So it took me, started going three days a week, doing three-hour sessions, three hour three days a week, and then, you know, how old am I now? 16 years later, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> helping her change her form and change her training out, you know, because I've done it for so long. <laughs> yeah, that's something, man. And that you, um, you had to do, you have to eat a certain, I mean, because you were doing heavy dip, heavy competition lifting. What goes yeah. into that? Diet and like what, what, what you eat massive amounts of like all the protein and all that kind of stuff, or do you have to yeah, I, I usually eat about 300 grams of protein per day now. Um, back then I wasn't super like paying attention to my diet because it was more like eat a fuck ton so you can like flood your body with nutrients because you were destroying your body because you're like you know, you're not really supposed to have like 600 plus pounds on your back and then sit down and get up with it. So it's like, I have to flood my body with nutrients to make sure it recovers. So like I was heavier back then. I was fatter back then. So like my ring shape wasn't as good cause I was kind of a chunk, but uh, you know, like I, I definitely dialed in kind of in the more of the bodybuilder stuff now. Like I, I track my shit. And, yeah. 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 
I eat, I eat a lot, like, uh, you know, with my partner and freaking, I'm, I'm getting him to like eat like I do. And he's like, oh my God, I, like, I have to eat like seven times a day. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, what would, be a, what would be a breakfast for you? Uh, usually I do like 300 grams of non-fat Greek yogurt, like half a tub of strawberries. Uh, this is going to sound gross because the combination is weird, but like a, two or three packs of tuna and like a protein bar. Yeah. Tuna's cheap, bro. Tuna's like a dollar ten a pack. So that's got 17, usually 15 to 17 grams of protein per pack. So So that would be your breakfast. Yeah. And then but and then you eat then and then you eat six more meals a day? Yeah. I usually wait about like two, three hours and probably kill another like either one of the family size bags of tuna or four or five packs of tuna. And then I'll have lunch and I'll have like another snack. And then I'll have like either first dinner or dinner. And then have like before bed snack, which usually like another cottage cheese or yogurt because it's slow digesting. So it's like that protein synthesis can do its thing overnight. I have a college degree in this shit. So like, that's why it's like, I have this weird terminology and shit. Okay, so, uh, so uh, what about meat? Do you eat like uh, red meat or chicken or? Yeah, I eat a lot of chicken. I eat a lot of steak. Um, if, I, if I can't make my own food, I go to fucking Chipotle a lot. So I get like steak bowls. Um, but yeah, chicken, steak, well, I eat a fuck ton of fish. I kind of like, I've realized I kind of have like a bear diet because I eat a lot of berries and melon and fish. So. <laughs> wow. Now, if you go to a sea, if you go to a seafood buffet, what do you do? Just go nuts? <laughs> oh, bro. I, I, I like going to get sushi. So like, I'll get sushi and sashimi and I'll kill like five, six, seven rolls. Or if I get, like, sashimi, I'll try and get, like, a plate for the table, like, one of the big ones with, like, 50, 60 pieces, and I'll probably eat three-fourths of it, you know? Wow, wow. <laughs> Sir, um, you'll have to pay for anything after the seventh plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, man. I just, I, you know, I'll eat a lot if you let me. <laughs> well, you know, that, then, you, then you need to go to that Peking buffet. It's $13.99, and it's um, in Central That's amazing. Oh, That's yeah, a deal. Oh, I'm I'm down for that. Then. Any any I will try any buffet that has sushi. Sometimes I'm always mad though when they don't have actual like fish in their sushi. It's like that fucking artificial crab shit, and I'm like, this is bad. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. The sushi's good. I don't know what they had. That. The sushi and the fries are good. In there. I've never had sushi. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> is it is it hard to keep up with your diet with all the traveling with, with the wrestling and the and the band? Yeah, it's that's probably the only time like I kind of really ever break from dieting is when traveling. It's like I'll try, like because usually you know I don't have my food scales, I don't have like all that shit at home, so I can weigh stuff out and have exactly what I need. So on the road, like I have to run through, you know, general ideas of macros of food in my head to be like, okay, I probably am gonna fucking go over my fats today, but as long as I get my protein, who gives a fuck? Like I'll get those in for like two or three days. You know, I'll kill fucking like McDoubles are one thing I eat a lot on the road from McDonald's because oh, really? from a fast food standpoint, like they're one of the best and cheapest options like to do. So, okay, we, we got to ask a standard question. Wawa. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I like that one. Now, every time I go to these coast, man, I try to stop at Wawa and get like they have a. Uh, those like the a la carte little spots and I like getting the, the rice bowls or fucking the subs and shit from Wawa. Yeah, you, you point it down so you know exactly what you're getting. So you could, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I like that shit. They don't have that where you live in Cincinnati? Mm -hmm. No, I think I think we're getting one here soon. I think we're getting a Wawa and a Sheets, which like if we get a Sheets, I'll be I'll be happy as fuck about that. So every, every wrestler, we, we talked to Big Joe, we did Big Joe. And he loves he loves Wawa. He just he's like Wawa. He loves it. And a lot of guys have loved Wawa. I mean, Wawa's great, dude. I mean, I feel bad for a lot of the dudes though who like didn't grow up or around where I grew up because they did they haven't experienced Bucky's. So we never I never had I don't know what's Bucky's. Y'all know about Bucky's, bro. Yeah. That's like Bucky's is think of a gas station, yes. Think of a gas station, but it's the size of Walmart. Like like a like not like a small neighborhood wall, like a super center. You know, it's it's got so many gas station pumps that has it doubles up on the numbers eventually. 
and they have everything in there, man. They have like their whole like clothing line wrapped around their mascot. They have like this huge uh, make your own fudge counter, probably like 30 different varieties of jerky. They got brisket tacos. They got everything in there. So like every time I'm in Texas, Texas has got the most of them. Every time I'm in Texas, always stop at Bucky's. Uh, I think they just put one out in, I want to say Kentucky. I think that's the closest one to me. <laughs> so every time I'm going to like North Carolina or like heading that direction east, I always stop at that Bucky's to be like, cool, I'm going to load up on fudge and brisket tacos and be good. <laughs> oh, okay. So you, you go off your tuna diet when you're on the road. like just the- Yeah, I'll, I'll splurge and take a little like desserts here and there. Because like, like if I'm going to somewhere I don't go often, like I'll snag a treat you know, and then, and hang on to that. I was like, I also work at like, I work at a brewery, like as my shoot gig. So like, oh. I, I can't sit around and drink all the freaking free beer I have. Cause then I would get beer gut. And like, I don't like being that fucking bloated. So no. I'll have like a few beers here and there throughout the week, but I have to make sure it adds into my, my regular diet and macros and stuff. Oh, okay. I was going to ask him about, we got a, uh, what about the Waffle House? Oh yes, of course. How can you be a wrestler and not dig Waffle House? I know, well, I know. Well, um, who didn't like it? Uh, Big Joe did Big not Joe like Waffle House. He did not like Waffle House. He said he didn't like Waffle House. Um, did, did, did you ask him about White Castle? Yeah. You know, I didn't know. We, he liked um, Wawa and um, what was the other one? Uh, he, he liked uh, Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, yep. But he didn't like I like Cracker Barrel, too. That's usually my preferred spot a lot of the time. I like Cracker Barrel. Yeah, but yeah, like right. obviously late night after shows, Waffle House will be there for you. <laughs> yeah, the Waffle House, the Waffle House. I get the Denny, um, Denny's is good. Denny's. I don't like Denny's. You know, I don't like Denny's. No, I pick it up. Denny's. Waffle. I usually try to go to local spots, but like if there's nothing open, Waffle House is there for you. So the Waffle House. What else? What else we got up here on the East Coast? That he sheets. He broke sheets. Sheets yeah. is a good one. Yeah, then there's sheets is a good one. But, uh, Y'all don't have Whataburger either. I've that. heard of burger, but I've never been there. Yeah, Whataburger, like, I should, I think probably the closest one to be now, because like we we just got one in Kansas, but, like, they're all over Oklahoma and Texas, and I fucking, I fucking love Whataburger. So every time I wrestle, like, either of those states, I'd be like, cool. At, like, first thing after the show, I'm like, we're going to Whataburger. So I can kill a quadruple stack burger, because I haven't eaten all day. <laughs> so I get my shit in. I haven't had a hamburger in a while, but now tomorrow, tomorrow I got to get a hamburger. We're gonna get a hamburger. I try to diet. Eat, I try to eat like egg white breakfast, uh, turkey, sausage. The turkey, I eat a lot of that too. Huh? It's, it's, it's like you were talking about meats. Like, oh yeah, I do eat a lot of turkey too. Like <laughs> turkey. Oh, I got one over here. Scrapple. Have you ever say scrapple? Scrapple. 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 It's called rapis. No, none of these guys know it. It's it's popular here. It's 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 like a mystery loaf meat, but it's good. And it's a name brand. You get the wrapper scrapple. They got turkey. Okay. I like. They got turkey, bacon, beef. It's delicious. You cook it, and you can make a biscuit. You put it in a biscuit. Scrapple. Scrapple. Okay, I'll try that. The healthiest because it's got the lowest fat and it still tastes good. Because I'm in the turkey. Well, I mean, it's probably very different, but it kind of sounds like spam. Like, yeah, a little bit, but yeah, kind of like spam. But it's, more, I, I, I think scrapple's better. Well, when you're, you, here, you ever had spam cooked by a Hawaiian though? Those fucking Hawaiians that like, cook around spam, dude. Oh, oh like, yeah, yesterday, yeah, there was this Hawaiian guy that came over to the house and cooked it for me. Wild, see, you know. <laughs> yeah, Don Ho was the guy's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. showed up and just cooking your freaking just good fried spam sandwiches, man. <laughs> Two women came with these things I put around my neck, and they did uh, the dancing. Nothing better than getting laid in your kitchen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But, uh, we, we got to talk about the tournament wins. Your first big tournament, the ARW, the De- Asylum Deathmatch tournament, back in July 2022. Yep. What was you know once you once you won that match, your your hand was held high. You, you won the tournament. What was going on in your mind? Like I made it, you know. It, it, it just definitely waves because, like, it was a combination of who I beat in the tournament. Like, you know, that was the the the, the company that gave me my first death match, and also the the building I had my first death match in. So, 
like a lot of those people that were at that show were there like since the beginning of, of me, you know, in my deathmatch career. And it was, you know, a lot of, a lot of combinations of like emotional waves and uh, physical waves. Cause like I was, I was beat down, man. Like, you know, from Necro rocking my shit from like taking all the glass from Bella, from Bo Raven, Josh Crane, uh, Necro, Brad Cash and Otis Kogar, like, you know, I went, I went through and pinned five dudes in that tournament. Because in that, in that, that finals, that elimination finals, I pinned everybody. So, like, I, you know, I was dog tired. You know, I was, I, the, only, the only other spot I was probably more tired in was Carnage Cup. And so I was, I was emotionally, like, on a high, but physically just, like, drained. So it was, like, this weird in-between of just waves of surrealness, you know. I can only imagine. How far of a drive is that for you from from the AWR tournament? So from here, it's only an hour and a half. Okay. But when I started going there, it was eleven and a half hours. Oh. Because that was that was the closest Fed to me that did death matches at all and regularly. So they were doing initially doing like a new blood show where it's like, you know, they bring in new talent. Uh, oh. They kind of see, like who wants like if it's kind of see who they like and dislike, and like I was me and another carload of Kansas wrestlers, and they liked all of us. We kept coming back for like new blood shows and kept getting on like the main card shows the next day, and eventually like I kept pressing him like, hey man, I want to do death matches because he made a joke in the beginning. He's like, it's like I know you guys think I'm a death match company. I don't make everybody do death matches unless you want to. And I'm like I put put my hand up. And he's like, oh yeah, well, yeah. I was like, yes, yeah. kind of the reason why I'm here. Like, so I kept pressing old Gary Emmett, my my giant gangly brother, now to, to give me a shot, and that's you know how we got Pondo and stuff. So once you won, it was an hour and a half drive back. Uh, thankfully, I had a place to crash, so like I didn't I didn't have to do the old driving with glass in my in my ass for um you know an hour or so. I got the got to go. Crash and well, I got to go to my the flop house in Indiana and uh sit there and debate taking the shower. Ooh, the yeah. shower. So the shower. That, was my least, that was my least favorite part of death batches for sure. The showers for sure. The shower. Everyone says that. Everyone Everybody says, says that. that the shower's worse than the actual match sometimes. I know one person that doesn't think that, and I call him a madman every time I fucking like I don't know if you watch Death Match Down Under a lot, but York. From Deathmatch Dead Under loves the after death match shower. I think he's insane. That's nuts. But, but how do you get all the, the glass in the back? Because I get mm-hmm. a, I, I broke a dish in my in my kitchen and step on I'm talking microscopic sliver like the size of a muffin. And I'm trying to get the damn thing out. How do they get it out? How do you get it out? Um sometimes, sometimes I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. I let it sit in there until I can have like what I return to as a glass is it, and I get to pop it out later. Uh, I had one in my back for about nine months from when I fought Randy West at No Peace because she like missile drop kicked me off the stage through a pain, and part of that pain was my low back and it, I couldn't get it out, and so I sat in there for a few months, uh, nine months. It was almost like I was thinking about. It, I was like, oh man, it's like it's been like a few like three or four months, right? And then. My friend was like, dude, it's been like nine because he did that shit in like November. I was like, oh, damn. And then one day at the gym, I was doing good mornings and fucking I felt it uh, like oh. all the pressure back and just shot out. I'm like, oh, sweet. Because bu- bu- it's been bugging the shit of me because every time I sit in a steel chair or whatever, I can feel it like pressing into my back and feel it like oh. wiggling around. So I was like, god damn it. I wish I could just get this thing out, but it won't. It's such a stupid angle and a stupid shape that I couldn't just get it out by myself. That's funny. A wrestler one time uh, sat back. Like this, he says, ah, I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, a piece of glass. I'm like, he's in there. He said, don't you hate when that happens? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Don't you hate when that happens? I'm like, I, I don't know. My, my favorite scenario of that is I was in, uh, it was the day after I wrestled in Vegas. And I was sitting there at one of the, like a, like a super, you know, chill diner. I was eating my food and like my forearm, like I use my forearms a lot for like forearm smashes and strikes and stuff like that. So my forearms were shredded. I'm sitting there just eating my food and I'm like sitting there and I hear like this crunch in my mouth and I'm like, oh, what the fuck was that? So I reach back and I 
have a wisdom tooth that's kind of fucked up from, from Mickey. And so I reached back and pulled out this piece of glass that I was like lodged in my wisdom tooth. And I put it on my plate that was empty. And the waitress just walked by as I did that. And she stopped halfway walking. She's like, what is that? I'm like, glass. And she's like, was that in your mouth? I was like, yeah. <laughs> See, <they laughs> so, and then, like, the dude beside me is like, oh, man, like, you're really shredded up. Like, what happened? I was like, I was like, I'm a professional wrestler. I was like, what do you guys do? Wrestle in glass? I was like, yeah, uh, have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been to shoes. Like, what are they bringing those tubes out for? Why are they bringing that stuff out? You know, I mean, they're, they're, the, the tournament, the first tournament that I know you were there. Yeah. I know JD brought a lot of people to the show. There had to be people that had no idea what they Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay. A lot of times CZW <clears throat> would run outdoor shows, um, and they, they the, sold shows or shows around things. And, of course, they put signs up, wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. You know, they didn't say death. But, and, and I would see people bringing – like local people seeing like, oh, you know, they don't want to go all the way to Philly, pay the parking, the $50 ticket, $20, $15, stuff like that. So they would bring a family and man, I, I, I spotted them. I'm like, oh, no, I, I know they don't know what's going on. And usually like first match would be all right. I've even seen them bring, I remember they brought a group of handicapped kids to a TOD. Hell yeah. Like, you no, know, they like to take kids. To, so I'm thinking that they're like a group home thing. And they probably like wrestling. You know, every all kids, everybody wrestling. So somebody, I guess the group leader, or like, well, wait, let's take the boys, to, let's take the kids to the, the wrestling, wrestling show. show. I heard they're having it. Like, oh, they want it so much. Let's surprise them. And I'm looking, and I got to, and I got to look at them. And then once the hardcore stuff started doing, I'm like, I'm looking at the bumps and the craziness, and I'm like looking at the people, and I'm like, and, and they're like, wow, wow, wow. Okay, get out of the way. And you know, they're going through the thing, and you see people like we're fans, we're right in there, like, yeah, I got him, hand him in a chair, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And then, um, but these people are like running from the hills, and we're yeah. running, the, and, and that was funny. And sometimes I'd be like, yeah, hey, you guys, you kids to the wrestling, I, yeah, yeah, we saw the sign out at the mall and or the sh outside, and like, yeah, they love wrestling. I'm like, okay, good. And then they then they get surprised too, but it, they did much. I've seen it's people. Old. Yeah, I, dude. Huh? As I say, it's always 50-50. Like, you know, like yeah. people don't know what it is. Sometimes it'd be like super duper into it and be way more into it than you think. Or like leave halfway through, you know, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't know what that was. But yeah, that was funny. Um, what else weird stuff? Uh, that's how I kind of got introduced to Deathmatch Wrestling. I've seen an ad on a mainstream magazine about, uh, you know, wrestling in Phil South Philadelphia. And it was in uh, 2002, 2002, it was one of the magazines. And I was like, let me check it out. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. fell in love with it, you know. Me, my dad took me. Yeah. I fell in love with it ever I, since. I brought a few old girlfriends to shows. And uh, one time we went to, there was a Philadelphia. It wasn't a CCW. It was, uh, I think, what was the other one? UP? The, bring up, yeah, bring no, up. No, not bring up. They threw chairs. PWU. PWU. PW. So we were there. And I figured it was, not, you know, I went to the PWU show. And she was sitting there. And out of nowhere, they, they started throwing the chairs. So I don't know what happened. You know, the guy goes like that. And and all the chairs started flying. And she's like, ah! I'm like, and so I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, here, throw a chair. Throw. <laughs> I'm like, throw a chair. Like, throw a chair. Spots, dude. <laughs> so she went and she's a dental, she was a dental hygienist. And she went and, and, and told her friends that he took, and I just kind of met her. And she, he took me to, she took you to what? Yeah, a wrestling, yeah, a wrestling on a date. Yeah. And they were throwing chairs and bleeding all over. And then these guys almost fell on us. And, and her nurse, her dental hygienist, they're like, what? Who is this guy? What? And they're like, and she liked me. So she's like, yeah, all my friends think I shouldn't see you anymore. And they're like, <laughs> they're like they, he, she, one was saying, you're, you're, uh, I'm dangerous. Uh, I'm taking you to dangerous places. Oh, and it was at the CZ, ECW Arena, which is already kind of like a South Philly. And it's a girl that's never been to anything weird. You know what I mean? Right. Like local. And I, I exposed her to like that's a right. seedy part of town, rough and tumble people violence but i mean it blew her mind she was like she'll still i can get her on her phone and she'll <laughs> 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 she's still 
I mean, that's a ballsy move taking somebody to a wrestling show on a date anyway, let alone like a hardcore like deathmatch show, man. It's well, like, it, no, it wasn't a hardcore deathmatch show. It was a it was it's chairs and blood. Like, oh, no, the, the chairs came out of nowhere, and that wasn't mm-hmm. planned. We never planned that. And there wasn't that much blood, but they were bleeding. But to a person that never sees anybody bleeding, right? That's a lot. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, that's like. That's kind of a good note. It's like, you know, to a normal person, like not a you know, an average like hardcore deathmatch fan, like anybody bleeding is a lot of blood to them, you yeah, know? Anybody, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 yeah. And she's in the medical field. She's like, well, he should stop what he's doing immediately and get care, <laughs> let alone what you guys do. That would really, get, that, yeah, that could actually make someone um, like mentally. Okay. <laughs> I've had many weird conversations with like doctors and like people in the medical field about what we do, and I'm like, yeah, I I know it's yeah, I know it's not good, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyway. Like I know I know my body, and I know what I can and can't do. I'm fine. <laughs> that would be a funny thing to um to uh have have somebody go to a, a therapist and say they were exposed to this thing, and then you show the video and the pictures. And, and and female therapist, she's oh my, and you're like yeah, my um my girlfriend does this, and she brought me to it, and I didn't even know she was doing this stuff, mm-hmm. and I I I, I never seen anything, like, and, and she'd be like oh my god, well you need to bring your girlfriend in here, and we're gonna have to discuss this, and like why did you expose this nice gentleman to it, and then she, yeah you know I mean she could the the therapist could actually work with it like it is an incident, you know what I mean like, dude, my old therapist thought it was really like like oh. like beneficial. Like I told her what I did. Like I would, I would come into freaking, you know, stuff like that, and like obviously, I have, I would have new scars, or I would show her my freaking forehead, or like new scars and cuts up from gussets, or you know, whatever else. And she's like, obviously, like this isn't good for your like your body, like to an extent, but like you know what you're doing, and you're professional. It's like like you're so you're limiting the stuff. It's like it's like controlled self harm. Like it's not like you know. Oh, in a dark room doing something weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's not super, like, it's not just self-harm for self-harm. Like, there's other things involved with it, like entertainment. And, you know, there's, there's like, so many layers on top of it compared to just, like, cutting yourself just because depression or whatever the scenario. So, my thing was just like, yeah, I was like, no, I this, this is cool. Like, you can keep doing that. Like, <laughs> Right. Well, well, I would consider, like, boxing. Um, yeah. Like, somebody's hitting you, but you're, and you're getting hit. But you're not in a room by yourself, just hitting yourself for the heck of it. You're, it's, a, it's an event. I, I, it's completely different. I got you. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally different idea. <laughs> but you like to blow her mind, right? Anyway, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I would show her clips myself like that. She's like, "What? How?" Like, you know, I, I showed her the roof bump and carnage cover. I show her clips of like me fucking taking the machete to Mickey Knuckles or something like that. And she's like, "That's crazy." Oh, God. You know, like you said, a woman is doing this. Like, is that a girl you're doing? Oh, that might be a whole separate um, session there. Yeah. That's always my favorite one because like, I have a really good gif of me freaking like doing the camel clutch with the machete and the Mickey. And I show the like, my friends or whatever, like, man, like I can't believe that dude's bleeding so much. I'm like, that's a that's a what's a lady. And they're like, holy shit. <laughs> you can't tell what she looks like at all because it's crimson. So <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I love those off the wall stories. <laughs> So your second big tro- tournament win, the Horror uh, Slam Friday the 13th tournament. Um, yeah. Any, any, anything that comes to mind? Um, like my, my first round was fun because, like, you know, I got the Russell XPW. <laughs> I'm going to call him XPW superstar just to give him shit. Uh, hardcore Hillbilly, you know. Okay. I've, worked in, I've worked him a couple times and then worked uh, kind of a, a Michigan mainstay, Jeremiah Goldmain, and I just got the – I beat the I beat the dog shit out of those guys, so that was fun. And then the massive finals, which was a five dude five way elimination final. You know, me, Don Wayne Murdoch, Satu Jin, uh, MM3, and MM3's dad, uh, DBA. And you know, that was just, the second the bell rang, fucking chaos. Like probably over two hundred tubes. Like John Wayne was pulling out a fucking pocket taser, mm-hmm. like. You know, me choke slamming MM3 through pains, and it came down to me and MM3, which is funny because in the last, the first horror slam tournament, he's the one who took me out in the second round in the human pincushion death match. So I finally got my just desserts and 
ended up winning the tournament and their deathmatch title. Oh, both. You won the tournament and the title. Yeah, but then then Satu Jin, uh, being a freaking total coward, uh, cashed in their little version of like Money in the Bank and oh. got me after running through the whole tournament, you know, and then caught me off guard and fucking got the title. So, but thankfully, here in a couple of weeks, uh, I get to fight his punk ass and take that title back. Violet J was in the audience. Did you, did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him uh, hanging out kind of around the back talking to the boys and shit. I, it took me a second to realize who it was because, you know, he's not in paint. So I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's the dude. Yeah, J.J. Allen. Yeah, that. I've seen um, – well, you, you pro- I'm sure you're probably going to get been, uh, invited to P.O.R. Um, you ever heard of P.O.R. Grand Prix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, freaking J.J.'s Fed in, in Georgia, oh. right? No, it's in West Virginia. No, West Virginia. Not- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an easy ride for you if you're in Cincinnati. I've been to the last two, and they are crazy. Mad Justice, Satu Jin's been there. I mean, it's on a, it's in a compound in the hills of West Virginia. No, yeah. No, Virginia, Timberland. Man, it's a great time. They got they, – it's – yeah. Did he tell you about that? Yeah, yeah I've watched – I watched the first two Grand Prix. Like, they're <laughs> fucking a blast, and they're like a tournament I'd love to be a part of. And, like, I know Escobar is uh, uh, a fan of mine. So like that's that's always cool. So hopefully I can get on one of them Grand Prix and fucking just go ham, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, those are great, man. I had a good time, and it's free. They don't even charge it. Oh, that's uh, rad. No, I didn't no, know that. No, oh, <clears throat> it's fr- free parking. They don't free admission. Uh, <clears throat> you can publicly urinate anywhere you want in the woods. There's woods. Um, it's nature, brother. Uh, it, the world's cold. A fan favorite place. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's a good place. And, if, oh, yeah. and their dressing room is a tour bus, uh, a school bus. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, it's a real underground scene, but it, it draw and it draws good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember they had uh, they had Vice documentary dudes at the last one. So yeah, there, like, yep, yep, yep. Vice was there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I didn't even recognize Violent J when he when JD posted that picture. I'm, you know, I, I'm not used to seeing him without the makeup. <laughs> Oh, same. Like I didn't even realize with him, so I saw him open his mouth and he had like a full diamond grill. I was like, "Yeah, Mike, that's got kind of, that's there's only one person in this room that could be, and that's him." So, I recognize he's got some face tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recognize him uh, uh, with, with the face tattoos. Yeah, exactly. and he's got the he's got the symbol around that. Um, you got the trophy, huh? You got, yep, you got, the- got the trophy. Got, the, got the tournament. The- got the belt for a hot second, and then got that taken away. But you got to keep the trophy, right? Oh yeah, man. I got it like right over here. Right. Somewhere around here. Yeah, I got my trophy stowed away. Oh, there it is. I like that. Oh, you can try it. I got a few other things. He's a smaller guy. I got that one. Yeah, man, that is nice. Yeah. Yeah, my my AWR one's a lot bigger and has thumbtacks and Kinsons on it, so I tried not to grab it off because I forget that's on there, so I'll end up stabbing myself. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys we know they don't even they end up losing their trophies or they sell them or they don't. They that mean, that, you, that means a lot to you, doesn't it? You're gonna keep that. Yeah, that, that, that's a huge thing to me, man. Like that's just as important to me as a belt or you know, like a big accolade, like or you know, even like I don't even get rid of stuff that fans give me, man. Like I've got there's a dude up in Horror Slam who he does paintings of everybody. And I've got, I have every single one of the paintings he's done of me. I've still got like five like big poster size paintings. Wow! From this dude, and like I even like I have I have a lot of kid fans. Like I have a lot of younger fans, and they'll draw me stuff. And so I got like drawings from kids, and uh, you know I'll, I'll save those and put them away like in a special like folder or something like that. You know, and hang on to it. That's that's important to me, man. Wow, that means a lot to me as a, as a fan, knowing that it means that much to him. He's just not doing it for a payday, or just he, he, he takes it real serious, like his trophy and everything like that. Yeah, that means a lot. Yeah, I mean, like what, what are I mean? Obviously, there's there's going to be some types of fans that kind of get on my nerves and stuff like that. But like, what what are we without the fans? Right, right, definitely, definitely. It's um, psychopaths being psychopaths, like <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, it goes with the territory. It goes with the territory. Yeah. Um. Now, um, do you know he's in a band? He's in a band? Yeah. Like like what kind of band? Uh oh uh, a metal band. Like like rock and roll? No, a metal band. Metal band. 
He doesn't know nothing like about rock and roll. No, no, he's in a. I mean, you're not wrong. He's just a, like <laughs> he's got. He's in one of those uh, hair metal. Uh, I think it's a Christian hair metal glam band. Yeah, like, I, I actually play in a Striper cover band. Yeah, Striper, and uh, it's like Striper and Poison. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh religious rock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know no, I had no idea. Okay. So you don't yeah. follow your metal. Oh, like I, I, do. Yeah, I didn't do my research. No, no. He, yeah, no it's I funny because I, I like Striper, but I don't like Poison. <laughs> okay, okay. Striper. I'm, I'm surprised you knew Striper because I. Oh, yeah. uh, you you heard of Striper? You remember Striper? Oh yeah, dude. I I have a pretty decent like metal and rock like history. I did a lot of research as a kid because I was like, I one of those things where like if I'm into something, I want to know as much as about it as I can. Oh, okay. Because it, it, it's it's heavy death metal. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, cannibal corpses. Yeah, he loved. He loved. Yeah, it's funny. It's the cannibal corpses. Corpse. Cannibal corpses is my favorite band. So that's funny. Okay. Oh, really? You know, like I like this. Like I like all kind of metal, hip hop, rap. But I, I grew up on heavy metal, going to concerts, uh, Metallica, all that stuff. And um, but um, yeah, I like those those bands. And I saw a documentary on Cannibal Corpse. They're like that. But um, and, and, and oh, like, Centuries of Torment was it that documentary? Uh, yeah, Centuries. The, he had a family, like a family guy. He looks like a regular guy. Like you wouldn't even know who he is. And he's yeah, yeah. George, George is cool as fuck, dude. Like <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. So I was like, um, I mean, this is a guy in Cannibal Corpse, and, he, and he's like a soccer dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's like Flex Bay, right? Eat the turbo. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, but um, that's what his band's like. But yeah. uh, it's intense. It's real. It's yeah, like yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, I didn't know. So you followed metal? Were you old, like? Did you did you like other types of metal too? Because I mean, I like yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like all types of freaking heavy music, and not. I mean, I'm also like a big hip hop head. I like music in general, man. Like I have, what was it? Like I have a big circle of fifths and a big bass clef, freaking you know, implanted on my skin. Like I I've been playing music since I was eight. Like I went to college originally for freaking jazz performance. Like music's important to me. Wow. So. Wow. Man, see nobody thought nobody knows that. But yeah, I'm glad this is getting out. Yeah, so. So, uh, but I can read, I swear. <laughs> what? I said I can read, I swear. Uh, I, 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 no, no, I saw your, I saw your interview the other day on the, uh, the, uh, dust, the spooky dust. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know what to expect from you. Yeah. Actually, I thought you were going to be like, I don't know if I could joke around with this guy. <laughs> but I, 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 and it, the, the death metal part, I'm like, but, um, what made you into the death metal? What gravitated you towards the death metal? The you know the hard, real hard. From um, I, I think it was a lot of like, especially like from a musician brain, a lot of it was just like the skill level of things. So like uh -huh. I, I, you know, I, I originally got into you know your your rock stuff. Like I was a really big like Pink Floyd fan. I was a big okay. like okay. Rush fan, um, Kansas, Zeppelin, The Who, uh, when I was younger, and then. Uh, my cousins, my older cousins, who were like my brothers, started getting into like new metal. So I was like, I got super into like Corn, Limp Bizkit, uh, Stuck Mojo, like stuff like that. Oh, okay. And, okay. and then like, once you get into heavier music, you kind of just want to keep getting heavier. So like, I got into thrash metal a bunch. Like, you know, I love like my old Metallica, I love Anthrax, Testament, uh, you know, the uh, SOD is like my favorite fucking thrash band. Suicidal tendencies. Yeah, suicidal fucking group. Dope, yeah. all the cross level bands like them. I've, I've I've shared the stage with DRI. Like those, that was cool. Oh. Um, and then, like, going faster and more brutal than that, got in the bands like uh, Cannibal Corpse was the one. I heard Hammer Smash Face, and I was like, that's sick. And that just evolved into like Obituary, Death Angel, or not Death Angel, but uh, Morbid Angel. Morbid Angel. Uh, yeah. You know, Dying Fetus, and it just kept getting into more, more technical, more brutal shit. So, right, right, right. Yeah, no, yeah. I like it. I listened to it. Uh, you have two EPs out on the uh, YouTube that I checked out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the second one is the one I, I prefer because it's, it's got the, our newest drummer and it's got me on vocals because we, we changed out our vocals from the first EP and it changed out our drummer because the drummer just had a new baby. So he got super busy. Oh. And then our old vocalist just kind of wasn't pulling his weight enough so he ended up pulling him wow and you and you did so and you've been on tours i saw the i saw yeah i was doing a little research i saw one you listed uh like a little tour you did midwest kansas and stuff 
Yeah, yeah, I've done a, I've done a handful of like three or four day runs, and I've done yeah. one like eleven day tour like throughout the Midwest, and so that was cool. That was I was filling in for another band because like that was kind of my goal when I was really focused on music was like I wanted to be a a, a studio basis and a touring basis like somebody you know who's really fucking good to just get the call it's like hey man it's like we need you to learn these like 10, 12 songs and you're gonna come do this month long tour in Europe or whatever like that was kind of the, kind of the idea. So. He's a jack of all trades, and, he did, and you did some boxing too, right? You said. Yeah, yeah. I, I never did any like professional fights or anything like that, but I I did like boxing training for a couple of years. So that's why you know every time you see me doing throwing punches in the ring and shit like that, this hand's always up. Like uh, I never never put the left hand down and throw punches. It's fucking. It's always blocking. You know, throwing jabs, yeah. little hooks, whatever. So he's, a, he's a legitimate tough guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want to mess with him. Yeah, but now you know. Tough guys like you that are strong and they they avoid fights in public. Like, do you ever because because of uh, you're in the wrestling field, you're in the tough guy, you know, the metal. You're around like incidents where you could get into a fist of cuffs. You avoid. Do you, do you, are you a fighter? Uh, it's a complicated question. I don't ever <laughs> seek out. Fights. I don't. I don't ever seek out fights, but I definitely finish fights. I'll put it that way. Oh, okay. You've been, in, you've been. In, see, I, I, after I became an adult, I, I don't know if I ever had a fight. But uh, yeah, I, I used to work security in a hip hop club, and so oh. I definitely, I used to fight people. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, I, it's funny because I've actually used a couple of wrestling moves to like eject people, and that's like one of my favorite things. Like I, I remember one time I ended up like fall away slamming this dude like out the front door because he was trying to fucking throw hands with his ex girlfriend. So I scooped him up, cross bodied him. He was trying to fucking post on the, the speakers in the sidebar to like stay where he was at. Yeah. And bumped him through, freaking ran him to the door, turned around and just threw him outside. I was like, hey bye. <laughs> <laughs> you were about you were about Dorman Bouncer, right? Well, I was the I was specifically the DJ bouncer. So like there's a VIP section in our club right next to the DJ. So it's like real nice fucking like leather couches, kind of elevated from the dance floor. So I was right there. I saw these two dudes, like this, this chick and this dude kind of like arguing. So I was watching it the whole time. And then I saw this dude fucking cock his fist back. Like he was about to fucking hit his girl in the face. And so I kind of slingshotted myself over the guardrail. Like it's probably like a good fucking eight, 10 foot drop. Dropped him to the dance floor. And I like ran to grab this dude. And I just like ran, jumped and scooped up this guy. And I was like, hey man, you know, we need to leave. <laughs> like, so then... So, right. so, so when when there's an incident uh, as as a uh, security like that, when there's an incident, was is there any way? I've always seen people try to talk themselves like I didn't do that. Once you once you want to once you say you gotta leave, there's no way to talk yourself back in that night, right? No, well, what, like I always kind of like that's why I watch enough, you know, to be like to see where the redeemable portion is at. But the second I'm like, well, you're done. You have to leave. There's there ain't coming back. It's over. It's over. You've been evicted. Yeah. Uh, you had your chance. You had your chances unknowingly, but you had your chances and you failed all of them. But, but then they always want to plead their case. Like, let me tell you what I, 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 I want. Right? And then nobody yeah. Like, that's cool, man. We can talk about it outside. And then I just leave them outside and then leave. Go back in and do my job. <laughs> it's great when you can use professional wrestling moves in real life. Um, I, Dude, it's wild. Like, it's like it's you know when those kind of happen, man. Like, usually, always hear stories about people throwing the front face lock on. Like, that's always kind of the one that people go to. But yeah, the fall away slam was one, and I've uh, I've choke slammed the dude in the pit one time. That was funny. Like, I was I was moshing at a show, or I was like in a crowd of the show. The dude wanted the mosh, and I wasn't feeling like moshing, so the dude kept like kind of hitting me, hitting me, and then he fucking caught back and hit me in the face. Like punching the face because he was mad I wasn't moshing, so I fucking grabbed him by the throat and grabbed him by the shorts, picked him up, pinned him to the floor. I was like, "Hey!" And he came, like, like he was drunk as fuck, and so he kept trying to like throw hands at me from the ground. And I was like, "You have about like four seconds to think about what you've done, and don't do it because <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. knock your ass out on the floor where you're already at." So he, he kind of like calmed down, and you know, I went cooled off a bit. He's easily legitimate. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't shoot on him. Besides yeah. death metal and deathmatch wrestling, what else are you into? Um, it's everything. I'm a I'm a really big nerd. 
<laughs> like I, I know they're kind of hard to read, but like my tattoos on here, I like they're big D twenties, like like Dungeons and Dragons dice. Okay. So, oh. Okay. Yeah, so I love I love tabletop games, and I'm a really big into like Magic the Gathering. So I play like card games and shit too. Okay, so some of them cards are worth a lot. My, one of my coworkers was telling me, you know, he sold a nine dollar card. And I was like, wow. I oh, dude, I got one. I got for my birthday. It's like a two hundred and fifty dollar card. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nuts. The Dungeons and yeah. Dragons, the Dungeons and Dragons, the, Dragons, the trading card. Yeah, the memes. Man, years and years ago, uh, uh, I was in school, and my buddy, I guess they were trying to recruit a Dungeons and Dragons group. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. And I go there, and they got these dice and these cards, and it's a little. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Like, well, you got to pick a thing and your powers. I'm like, it's a little. Well, I, I, anyway, I, I, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. <laughs> well, no, man, it's it's cool. Like, I I mean, I started when like it's really weird to think about. But I've been playing tabletop games for like 21 years. So I've been playing them since. Really? I, yeah, I've been playing since I was eight. I haven't really stopped playing. So like, I, I it's a weird resurgence because like even back when I was a kid. You know, in the early 2000s, like late 90s, like I was, I was made fun of for fucking playing D and D, and now, now it's like everybody and their grandma plays D and D, and it's cool. Uh, like, you know, I'm happy that the the, the hobby's like, yeah. you know, doing all the shit, but like, you know, y'all were making fun of me fucking 15 years ago, like, yeah. You know, there's a um, you know, shopping center in, in Smyrna, and yeah, there's a next to the way back. They're, they got they running out a whole store and they and they have board games and they play on weekends they're on there all yeah, day dude. and I'm looking in the window and they got their little stuff out and I couldn't even begin to play it but they're in there playing for I don't I don't even know what the purpose of, I don't know what your goal is I don't know I, 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 I can I can okay so if you think of it like wrestling because the, they're literally the same thing I always pitch to people like if you have a problem with your character, or like getting your gimmick over, play D and D or play to play a role playing game because it's literally the exact same thing. <laughs> Cause you're, you're playing somebody you're not right. Yeah. Like your wrestling character, your wrestling character can be you, but usually it's either like elevated or completely something completely different. Like for sure. What's like the, the undertaker is not the undertaker hundred percent of the time when he's the undertaker he's literally a undead six foot 10 wizard that shoots lightning and fights people. That, does that not sound like a D&D character? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. So, like, if, if you have a problem with improv and storytelling, that's literally all D&D is. Because you have your your dungeon master, which would be a wrestling perspective, like your GM or whoever has the pencil. They're right there. They have the big main story. They have the big fucking skeleton arc. You're the character. You're the one, the wrestler or the, the, the character that's going through and making the story have color, have a purpose, like improving things that the, the the GM or the the dungeon master didn't even think of, you're adding on to the story and you're playing a character at the same time. It's, it's literally the same shit. This but one's it, fucking ultra violent. Like, <laughs> well, how do you win at the end of the night? They're in there playing all night in, 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 in the store. You don't win. That, that's Where like, you, well, it's like, like you, you, can, you can have like a one shot where it's like a one, Think of it like an old episodic, uh, like TV show, like Twilight Zone. Like you can have like an episode uh, of Twilight Zone where you go and have the beginning of the story and the end of the story. And you're done in an hour. Or you can have like a wrestling program where you have months or years of story built up to one ending moment, and that's usually how D and D works. Where it's like you have months of sessions of story building, of character building, of seeing you know characters go away introduce like falling in love with people like all these big you know changes in the world or the, like, the universe or call it over time and then you get to get, get that hopefully have the payoff towards the end or you might just die in the process so yeah i'm gonna stick to tv <laughs> hey man that works too same shit like i i can't i can't I can't bring. I just can't do it. I tried it. I, 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 it's cool, man. It's, there's a lot of wrestlers that do play, man. I'm always kind of baffled at some of them that do. I'm like, oh yeah. It's like we should, you know. I've always wanted to start like a Dungeons and Death Match, like little little thing. I think it'd be fun. Oh no, for sure it's different. I, like I said, a lot of people, a lot of people in my work play, it, and I was surprised with the cards. You know what I mean? Because I know it's been around for so long. Um, yeah. Pretty pricey. 
<laughs> oh yeah, man, it's, it's it's nutty. Even cards that I had as a kid, like I remember having cards ten years ago that I could get for a dollar, and they're like ten times that price or twenty times that price now. Nuts. And the prices go up and down, I believe, right? Sometimes it's like stocks. It's super. It's cardboard stocks, man. That's all it is. <laughs> oh, it's like Beanie Babies. <laughs> Mike's a big. Yeah, it's a Beanie Baby fucking dropped off. This one's been around for oh god, almost thirty years. It came out in ninety or no, over thirty years. It came out in ninety two. So I'm, throw, I'm the type of guy that like, well, I, I had that. What did you do with it? Throw it out. Threw it out. Like. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's like I get fucking heated. Like, I, cause I'm also a big comic book collector too, man. And I hear people like, "Yeah, I used to have like these old Superman comics. And I just like chucked them out." I was like, "What do they look like?" I was like, "Oh, the cover was like him picking up a car." I'm like, "You threw out an action comics number one. Like, you just threw out a million dollars, bud. Like, why did you do that?" Or, or, uh, or, uh, well, how much were they? Uh, the t- twelve cents. Uh, uh, when did you get them? Sixties. They were my mom's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts my soul, brother. Like. <laughs> I'm a fan. Of, I'm a, I collect wrestling memorabilia. So sometimes I'm the same way. Like someone will be like, "Oh, I got rid of the belt," or "I threw out the belt," or "I gave it to a fan." I was like, what? "I know, I know." It's nuts. Yeah, I used, to, I used to have the black, the black back card Hulk Hogan figure, man, and just you know, like I just, I just tossed it out and opened it up and never, never did anything with it. I'm like, "Oh God, no!" That's like the rarest the like, yeah, <laughs> figure. Yeah, you were, were you a Hulkamaniac growing up? I was not. I was no. never a Hulk guy. Like. <laughs> From that era, uh, I like Jake the Snake a lot. Like, I kind of liked Warrior, even though I know, I know he's a bad wrestler, but the gimmick was cool. Like, I was a big Road Warriors fan, so that was also like, or I guess Legion of Doom would be the time. So. Everybody, no, they were all good. They were all good back then. Yeah, all the yeah. gimmicks. They were all good. Yeah, Ron Simmons also like another huge one I liked a lot. So, well, Farouk later on. Um, the BJW Christmas show, that's on your bucket list. Right? Yes. Top of the fucking bucket list, dude. Big like, Japan. Yeah. Big Japan and Freedoms both have fucking Christmas shows that I want on both of them because I love Christmas. And so Deathmatch on Christmas is like, you know, that's must be my birthday kind of situation. They say that the American guys over there are just mob. They're just like, they're, they, they, the, the Japanese guys, the fans just, Take care of you. Buy your food. Take they they just love, they ignore the run. They're they're used to the regular guys. You guys are like a specialty thing when you go over there because these guys oh yeah are, and yeah. they would love you man with your look and size because oh, yeah. you're not you're like a, a yeah he's, real, a, big, real rep, he's yeah. a legitimate badass yeah, yeah. he's a legitimate badass and you would get over so like slack you might not come back they might, <laughs> they might <laughs> yeah, like I always thought about it's like if I'm walking around looking like baby Brody they probably would they probably would like me I'm not I'm not six ten by any means but like you know I'm, I'm bigger than probably most Japanese people like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're even bigger there. Yeah, yeah you're even bigger. Yeah, you're even huge over there. No, uh, what's the chance you get there? Or like, what do you have to do to get there? How how do you get big? Like, I mean, just keep showing out, I suppose. Like, I don't, you know, like I, I'm gonna try to say this as much tactile as I can. Uh, you know, I I would love to be able to have. Uh, a promotion kind of helped me get out there. Like, that'd be great if I was on a tour and fucking got the hop on. But, you know, if that doesn't happen, I'm going to do things like the way I've been doing things my whole life and live, live, eat or be eaten and find my way out there and grind to get there myself. So. Yeah, like GCW goes there, right? They go there. Yeah, GCW does. Uh, I mean, CZW did, you know, back in the day. Like, I, I feel like ICW is probably going to at some point since they're hitting Australia a bunch and then hitting uh they just they're just going to UK this weekend. So Oh yeah, yeah. They're in UK. Yeah, UK. Uh, I watched a really good documentary with the Katal you, you get IWTV? Yeah. The uh the the uh the Kirks. Life with the Kirks. Did you see that? watch that? That is really good. Casey Kirk went to uh Australia by herself and mm-hmm. it, it, Really good documentary. It's like a yeah, that, life with blank a wrestler. They give them a camera and they videotape like a couple weeks of their life. And yeah, me and me and Hoodfoot were talking about his, and it was it was really funny. <laughs> He's like, I don't do a lot, so like <laughs> he did one. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's out yet or like getting edited, but I'm pretty sure they're doing one with him. 
Oh, we're running out of time. No, 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 we're good. The camera? No, no, no. Uh -oh. Close to nine fifty. Oh, hey, no, okay. Gotta work. He's all you gotta do is give. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Uh. Only thing I. Only thing I recommend. I like. You might want to take up the. Uh. Because some of these things you had happening. Murdoch is the best at taping up his wrists. Mm hmm. He's yeah, I tape mine about here, but my forearms are already fucked, so I really don't care. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, like you can, um, like use a flesh colored uh thing if you want. If you don't, uh, if, if, nah, if you don't want, like, I don't like uh, armor. If I, if I wanted to wear armor, I'd wear a shirt. Oh, all right, all right, never mind, never mind. All right, all right, we take this out. <laughs> I, I like my scars, man. Like I, I don't know. Like it's, I say this a lot on on to younger guys or like on podcast like interviews and stuff, but like. I consider like my back specifically like my battle flag. And so if you have more scars and more tatters and more tears on your battle flag, that's just more wars and more battles you've been through and survive. So you keep walking around with your battle flag. My forearms are included. So <laughs> Right, right. But you oh but you do tape your I know you tape your you Yeah, I taped I taped about like right here, just so my arteries don't get cut. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, then you're good. Yeah, you're good. You're good. I just yeah. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know if you take because when you were telling me about your your forearm injuries, I'm like, I don't know if you take any. I didn't. I can't recall. No, nah, I, nah, I, I I don't wear elbow pads either. I might probably do that eventually, but I don't like wearing them. So. <laughs> yeah, you've never worn a, a a shirt in the rain. That, that, no, that, 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 actually, that. that puts you in that Junka side group right, right there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. you know I mean, like right there. Right. And that was kind of, that's, I mean, that's kind of like my life goal, man. It's like, I want to, it's, it's weird to say that, but like, that's, I want to look like Takeda. I want to look like Kasai. I want to look like, you know, Ito and have, you know, the, the map of scars on your body. Cause that's, that's what, that's what we're supposed to. I mean, like I say, I say what we're supposed to do. That's not shitty, but like, that's, that's giving yourself to the art as much as you possibly can when you've given every single inch of your skin to the art. So, no, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, the, the guys without the shirt. Look, even the guys with the shirts and they tape up, they're still going out. I mean, I oh, hard to Like that's that was not me knocking dudes with fucking shirts. Like Pondo wears a shirt. Pondo does fucking crazy shit. Like right. he's the man. He's like you know like. Uh, Masada, Masada freaking wore a shirt forever, right. and he's like still one of the greats. Like, right, right. But you got you know. like black, um, the, the Chris, Japanese Chris, Chris Bradley wears, doesn't wear a shirt now. Chris Bradley does not wear a shirt, yeah. he took a shirt. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bradley, uh, Ross and Bradley team up there. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. They, uh, yeah, the no, oh, the back in the old day, CZW, wife beater never wore a shirt, Mondo yep. never wore a shirt. Look, I'm not, I'm not. I hope nobody jumps on me. Don't jump on me. You've never been in the ring. Stop talking about shirts. But I'm just saying that that's your. You, I, I saw in the other interview that you said you don't wear shirts. That's so really, and you don't want to wear a shirt. But uh, yeah, no. no, it's just another. It's taking it to another level when you don't have the shirt. Either. Right, and I, th and I think a lot of it's not even really like they don't want to get cut up. I feel like a lot of it's probably like body, like viewing their body differently like i don't look good enough to have a shirt on i saw or have a shirt off so i'm gonna wear a shirt versus like i don't want to get cut up it's like of course they're gonna get cut up they're fucking in, they're doing death matches so like oh i like, see uh, yeah you're about belt yeah, yeah i guess you do one. Oh, satu jim he's a big dude yeah he's a big dude he, he likes to wear shirt. Shirt. Uh -huh. yeah that works for his gimmick a lot though like tremont's always wore shirts like obviously i don't know tremont like tremont definitely cares more about getting his freaking forehead like <laughs> looking like like of the old like Abby as much as possible. So everybody everybody kind of has a trade, you know. Yeah, everybody's right. got. Everybody. Yeah, like, like we'll talk about Big F and Joe. Freaking Big F and Joe wears a shirt technically, but he wears no pants no. and no knee oh, pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. baffles me, dude. Like I have I've had quite a few leg cuts and leg cuts suck. So I couldn't imagine like just always getting my thighs and my ass and my freaking knees shredded every match oh yeah yeah that match with drake he was all oh, kind of, yeah he was, uh, he was messed up I, I like the one he did with uh hoodfoot at icw that was a really fucking good one crazy he's hard man he's hardcore he was in tod yeah. we did an interview with him it was pretty interesting you could check that one out we did we did um raven havoc your buddy down there and uh yeah raven's my dude yeah. But, uh, real yeah. quick, uh, if you had a dream match with so anyone from the past, any deathmatch wrestler from the past, who would it be? What would be your ultimate dream match? Uh, oh, man. From the past? Uh, yeah. Nate, Nate Hatred. 
Nate Hatred. Okay. Nate Hatred. Nate Hatred. Yeah. What brought you? What um, gravitated you towards him? Because we, I remember him in CZW. He was a really nice guy. Uh, that's good to hear. Like, because uh, I always hate when we like you know hearing about my idols and they're like end up being not cool. Okay. Um, no, it's just be, being a power guy and like me always kind of being gravitated towards like like guys who look like monsters. Him having the long hair, the face paint, and then bring in bring in the intensity with all of that, like the look behind it, man. It was just, you know, chocolate and peanut butter for, for a little rim. So <laughs> when, when he first came to CZW, he didn't do death matches. And then all of a sudden he started doing death matches and, um, mm-hmm. and he went hard and he didn't, he wore, he wore like a, a very light tank. Very light he tank. wore, yeah. he was almost without a shirt. It was very light. Yeah. It was kind of like a stringer. Like it was really like a thin tank top. And then I, I think he kind of like, I mean, obviously I don't know, but I think he kind of what people wanted to wear a singlet. But not look. I say this not talk your shit up in the singlets, but like not look as nerdy as a dude in a singlet. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. right. Well, to tell you that, that since you liked him so, he was a nice guy. He was very super nice. He was super nice. Um, I mean, just like a like a kid. Almost. He was very like uh, down to earth and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not not oh, yeah. snobby, not no, like no, no. Um, he was friendly with you. He'd stand out in front of people, just yeah. talking and. When did I last run into him? I think uh, the A Stone show. I mean, I, we, I talked to him at the A Stone show. For, uh, Where? The hybrid show at A Stone, A Stone, Pennsylvania. Okay. I think you were there. Uh, well, what, uh, uh, the H2O show. He was at an H2O show with just in the crowd. Was he? Okay. Maybe six years. I don't know. Before he passed. Yeah. yeah. But he was a nice guy. So you would have liked him. And oh, yeah. He, he probably is up there. You know, he, he, it's good that you're re- representing him and you like him and you, you look up. Yeah. To him. Yeah, he's, he's one of the ones that got me in, man. So one of your idols w- is confirmed as a good guy with everybody. Yeah, yeah, Super good. yeah he, he definitely be my like. If I also do non death match like in the past, it's kind of a tie between Abyss and Taz. So okay, okay. Awesome. Before we head out, do you have any questions for us? Um, how pumped are you guys for Ultraviolet Underground? We're pumped. I can't wait. So we've been talking about. That's all I've been posting. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah! Good, good, good. I'm, I'm a huge, like I said, I'm a huge old school CZW fan. Zandig's like my guy, you know. Um, so, so yeah. once, once I found out that you know it was coming back, once I found out he was involved, I was like, you know, I'm in. I'm 100 percent in this company. I'm a share this, and we'll be oh. there. Yeah, he's that. He looks. He seems intimidating and aura about him, but he's a nice guy. He's really he's like. Give him the uh, the old, you know, the the slow, the easy tag, the, the wrestler, the, the the dead fish handshake. Yeah, he loves that. He loves that. He, he, he loves do that to him. He, 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 Bro, I hate that. Like, <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, and I freaking shook uh, big freaking Supermax, Big Hernandez's hand, and he gave me a hell of worker handshake, and I was super confused. Like, the little, the little this fish. Yeah, it wasn't just the fingers, but just like he put his hand in my hand and like didn't squeeze it all and just kind of like put it in there. I was like, what happened? That was weird. Like, it's like am I in a gang now? What happened? Like, you know what? You know what? I do that to people I meet or relative anybody. I do that on purpose just to just to like, what kind of handshake is it? Yeah, I just just to like get to just to talk like, with him. Yeah, and I don't tell him. I don't tell him it's a gimmick. It's a wrestling thing. I just do it. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna keep the tradition alive in my own way, just to get. <laughs> no, really. I'm like, if I meet someone, I go like, like oh yeah, like that. And just to like, what kind of guy is that? Like, little do you know, it's a wrestling handshake. Yeah. I won't give freaking like good grips to everybody because like there's so many handshakes. I'll do like quick fucking in outs to like everybody and shit. I'm like, yeah, here, here's that or Nux or fucking big forearm like. Handshakes and shit like that. I'm like, good. Let's let's go. Like, I got plenty of people calls to shake. So, so Remington, thank you so much oh, yeah, for yeah. being here with us. The yeah. Carnivore, Remington. We were going to see you March 25th at the Ultraviolet Underground. 